Hi, ladies and gents, welcome to CEO Meets. My name is Pip Wilkins. I'm the Chief Executive at the British Franchise Association, and I'm delighted to be joined by John Preston from Mathnasium today. So, John, first of all, welcome. Tell us all about um, Mathnasium, why you were set up, and when you were formed. Okay. First of all, thank you for having us on. Um, really appreciate it. So in terms of Mathnasium, Mathnasium is actually a US franchise. Uh, it was franchised in 2002. One of the things I actually love about Mathnasium is the reason why we started out in the first place. I think we're the only um, supplementary education provider that is a franchise that started out not just purely for financial reasons. Uh, it's quite a sad story, really. It's Larry Martinek, the original founder. His son was a mathematical genius, and they used to work together and um, discuss really complex topics, but break them down in a way that made sense to Larry's son. Um, they did this over a number of years. Larry was already a teacher and a tutor and everything else. And he just created this bank of materials. Um, unfortunately, one day, uh, his son was involved in a car accident, passed away. And um, yeah, and so I think it was like a month or two later when they said, well, where do we go from here? They wanted to, it, almost in homage to his son, take these materials and do something with it. So the first thing he did was he went to the authorities in LA and he said, guys, the way you're teaching maths is all wrong. This is how you should do it. <laughs> what have you done? Well, <laughs> yeah, um, he wasn't the best salesman in the world, should we say. <laughs> but I mean, education system is what it is. And they, they kindly declined his offer to change it. So what he did then was he then turned around and said, okay, well, I want to do something with this. I want to create my own center, but it's not a tuition center. We're a learning center. And there's a material difference there, you know, in the way that we approach things, huh? teaching children mathematics, but in a way that they truly understand it. My background is, was investment banking before we got into all of this. And I saw on a, on a daily basis, like AI, robotization, automation, you see this coming along, and you realize that the skill set that people need in the future is not to remember things like Google's going to remember things better than I ever will. Mm -hmm. But if you can actually truly understand something and you can, you can manipulate it, that's when you know that you truly understand the subject. That's I mean, like that's... somebody saying, Pip, do you remember how you did algebra? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a franchisee first, weren't you? And then you went on to take on the UK master rights for the UK. Talk to me about your journey. Why, why did you do that? Uh, for me, it was actually an illness. Um, I had a really successful career um, and I enjoyed what I did. But the, the I had this illness and there was a period of time in which I thought, you know, maybe I won't get through this. And there are questions that you ask yourself in times like that. And you say, is this it? Is this all you've done? And when I when I recovered and thankfully I recovered, you know, uh, after that, I was back in the workplace and I was thinking, is this it? Is this all you've done? And I loved running businesses. I had businesses when I was young, when I was like 18 years old. And at the same time, I wanted to do something that had an impact in the world, like an altruistic element. And I didn't know what that was. And I certainly wasn't looking for a maths franchise. Yeah. Um, and I looked at everything and I looked at a whole load of different franchises. For me, it was quite natural for me to look in the franchising space because if you look at what the big corporates get right, it's those systems that they have in place. And that's what a great franchise should have. And so I was looking at all of that and I was like, and I went to um, the exhibition in October, the British Franchise Exhibition, uh, and I actually didn't see Mathnasium there, but I got an email through. It was like a week later, and he said, you may have missed us. And I was like, oh, I'll just check it out. I started looking at the customer reviews, because in the, at the time they weren't in the UK, they were in the US. Looked at the customer reviews, and they were consistently amazing. And I said, well, there's got to be something in this. They're doing something right. So, And that's what started me out on this. Well, I know that you don't have to be able to teach maths <laughs> to be able to be a franchisee. So what are the attributes then that you're looking for that you obviously had that made you a great fit for Mathnasium? Management. Okay. Uh, marketing. 
but you don't need to be a marketing specialist, but you've got to be willing to put yourself out there. Um, and above all else, I think really, the franchisees that we tend to attract have come from a background of success and success can take many different forms. It is not a siloed thing, but when you get people that understand what it takes to be successful, they become great franchisees. And we see that, you know, all over the world, wherever we are, we see that replicated. You've touched on the tuition thing that you do that makes you different. It's about learning. Um, is that what sets you apart from the other kind of providers that do educational stuff? In the franchising space um there's probably a whole load of different things um i should have a more articulate answer than this but genuinely children enjoy coming to the center mm -hmm. and everything in the center there's no accidents everything is done in, in a purposeful way that leads to the children developing developing mathematically and and when i say we're not a tuition center you know we get the results like a byproduct of what we do is children are greater exams um, but it it's the fun that the children have it's the interaction with the with the tutors and creating that ecosystem within there um, it, it's all part of the package and then we've got almost twenty eight thousand pages of curriculum that have, they take children from learning how to count all the way through to trigonometry you know gcse level maths so what are the, the age range then? Learning to count, I'm assuming quite young. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got the materials that can support that because you do get children that come to the centre and they are already in school mm -hmm. and actually that, you know, they've just really struggled with maths. So we have to be able to facilitate that. So typically it's about five years old all the way through to GCSE 16 years old. Wow. So really yeah. broad range and so much, so much content that you can use with them. Yeah. And and we've got it in a way that's really scalable with the center. So you can have center with hundreds of children and it's all paper-based or seemingly paper-based, but it's all underpinned by this really advanced CRM that we've got that takes it from like a lead capture all the way through to designing a bespoke learning plan for every single child. So, yeah. So what are the growth plans? We're in almost in the middle of 2022, can't believe it. What's your kind of plans for the rest of this year and beyond? At the minute, we're growing by a, a new centre every like six to eight weeks. And we've got a pipeline out for the rest of the year. We are looking to have 100 centres by the end of 2026. Wow. But we're not looking for 100 franchisees. We're looking for about 30, 40 franchisees in total. Fantastic. Yeah. Some really ambitious growth plans, but it sounds really good. Um, yeah. I have one final question. I ask it to everybody. Um, okay. And you've got such a broad range of experience because you've done this as a franchisee and a franchisor. So a top tip for both. If you're looking to become a franchisee, what's your top tip? And if you're looking to become a franchisor and, and really take your own business forward, what's your top tip there? Okay. On the franchisee side, mm -hmm. going with that first, I think there's more than one top tip, but it, just in brief, it would be, look at the systems that you get as a franchisee uh -huh. the, those systems are going to enable your success and that could be with a large brand or a small brand but it's about the, the quality of those systems the second is the support that you're going to receive as a franchisee one of the biggest learnings for me as a franchisor is that the more that you invest in the training and, and the development of your franchisees the better that they launch the better they are as a franchisee um, yep. so those would be my top two uh as a franchisor are you do you mean like someone that's currently got a business and they're thinking of becoming a franchisor yep operations manual <laughs> operations manual <laughs> the driest topic uh and if if i'd have said that to me like four or five years ago i'd have gone no way uh, but actually <laughs> operations manual underpins everything that you do it your your training emanates from that the quality of your franchisees, how you implement the systems, the, the operations manual really is critical. The Bible, isn't it? It's got to be done right. It, it does. It does. And it's it's a massively underrated tool. Fantastic. Yeah. John, thank you so much for your time today. It's been awesome chatting.